All right, it is EJ, and we are here at the win with Dylan Francis. Yes. How are you? I'm fantastic. I am so glad that you're here. Thank you. Because I've heard so many great things about you, and Thank I you. am so glad to talk to you. What is happening? Um, just uh, I'm here every weekend, by the way, so if you ever want to hang. Seriously? Pretty much. Or we can hang in L.A., too. Yeah, true. You, you don't want to make the, the trip or anything like that. I mean, I, I got to be here. Oh. Because <laughs> of the checks. <laughs> yeah. I got a residency. <laughs> Pretty nice. <laughs> tell me, tell me more about this. You know, I, I come here what probably three or four times out of the month, mm -hmm. um, Friday or Saturday, sometimes Sunday, and get to play XS or Encore Beach Club, rock out. How does that feel? It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the flight is forty minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I get to go crazy, and then I get to go home. You know what's interesting? I, I almost want to take it to a deeper sense because I feel yeah. like you're almost like Geppetto when you are a DJ. Don't you agree? Yeah, like sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> well, sometimes you can be. Sometimes you got to figure out where those strings are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can, oh, I have lost them. Let me uh, pull this. Let me play uh, Better Off Alone by Alice DJ. Get does the, that, get does the that crowd still back. happen? That, that can happen sometimes. You can play the wrong record. Like there's there's definitely been some times where I've where where it's going so well and you're like you know what let's get crazy I'm gonna play this I don't know hypothetically bomb a stereo record or something like that people don't know it and then you're like ooh I just ruined the vibe mm. I went down I went down to a different tempo I should have stayed up here or I went too high in tempo it it happens sometimes but then that's you know the beauty of of DJing is you can how we feel in Vegas? And then start something else. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I would be the one DJ that would drop because I don't know how to DJ. So it would be burr, 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 whenever I, mean, I mess up or anything <laughs> like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you play to get him back? Like guaranteed. Buy you a drink. T-Pain. Mm. Done. Always. Classic. Classic. Everyone. It just. It's such a good song. Mm-hmm. I've been still trying to make that like the national anthem. I think I think the national anthem that we have now, it's not up to date. No. I think what we should do is bring it up to date with T Pain. National anthem, when was that made? Seventeen something? Imagine. Baby girl, what's your name? Let me talk to you. Let me buy you a drink. Yeah, that would be dope. I'm T Pain. You know me. Yeah. Convict United boy. States. Wait. Ooh, nappy boy. Wait, what is it? Convict boy. No, nappy boy. Nappy, nappy bo boy. Oh, yeah. Huh? Wait. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it. Don't butcher it. I'm sorry. Are you gonna play that tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how does one go about getting a residency? Um you right. got you gotta be good. Okay. I know that. All right, let me check that. <laughs> let me check. Can I check that off the list? Okay. Um, I actually have no idea how I got mine. Uh, I do know the first time I, I came and played here, mm -hmm. and um, it it was Wayne and Shecky. Um, Wayne still works here. Shout out to Wayne. Um, and I guess Wayne's the reason I'm still here. That's dope. Um, but yeah, I, I remember, I think like, I think they brought me in to do like a test run, and I definitely failed you badly. Did. Yeah. But I, I think I was the only DJ that ever came to them and was like, hey, what did I do wrong? Tell me, tell me, really. Because I know I did something wrong. Can I, right quick. Yes. So you're having this conversation. This is how I'm picturing it. You're in the boardroom. You're at one end. Oh, no, we were just walking back. Oh, well, no. Like, you're, just, I'm, let <laughs> okay, me so you're in the boardroom. Sorry, my bad. And you're, you're, in a, you're in a conference room that's like this, the, the size of this table, right? Yeah. You got Mr. Wynn at the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. And you, you're at the other side of the table. You guys are talking, mm -hmm. and you're like, "What did I do wrong?" Yep. And they said, "What?" They said, "You cleared the room. <laughs> Don't do that again. Next time when you come here, play music that more people know." Okay. And I was like, "Absolutely." And and also it was that dance music in America was still not fully there yet, mm -hmm. and especially with music that I was making, which was Mumbatone, which is like reggaeton dance music infused. Right. That was not, I, I literally cleared the room with my music. 
And, and, and he said it in the most polite way too, where he was like, look, man, like, I love your music. I do. I just don't think the people that are, are coming here are ready for that right now. Like play one of them, but don't play, don't play an hour. But you know, what's <laughs> interesting. I never thought that like someone, I'm going to just say it, a suit could describe to you what you did wrong as a DJ. Well, sh- I really respect Shecky. Shecky, uh, he, he's like an old hip hop head. Like th- this also goes, go, like I've always been very open to um, constructive criticism, especially when it's constructive. If it's just like, hey, it was bad. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. Do something else. Mm-hmm. That's not constructive. I don't know what to do. That, I, you're not telling me what's bad. Um, sh- like, so there was this, the, way back, I used to play at this, this club called The Room in LA. I played for drink tickets. I couldn't even drink because I had a DUI. So mm-hmm. I like literally paid for played for nothing. But but I got my chops there and I was playing dance music and I no one was coming in. No one at all. And the bouncer actually came up to me and he's like, Look, man, I love your music. I listen to metal. I love it so much. But if you want people to come in here, I kid you not, go and watch a VH1 or MTV doc on 90s hip hop. Go learn all 90s hip hop music. Come back here and I guarantee you'll have this place popping. I did exactly that. I went, I researched everything, found all the 90s, the hot 90s records to play that I also, I'm like, oh yeah, I know these records. What year was this? This was got to be like 2007, eight, six. And this one night, like instead of playing Crookers and Bloody Beat Roots and, you know, Diplo records, I was like, all right, I'm just going to play 90s hip hop records, the Humpty Dance. You pack know. it up, pack it yeah. in. Right, right. Um, the, the Rockweiler. Uh-huh. Um, and <laughs> yo, la, 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 so la. many people came in. And then this, this group of people were like, do you play this all the time here? Because we will come back every Friday. And I was like, yeah, no, I do this all the time. It's my first time playing it. So ever since then, I, I've always, you know, I've always been open to constructive criticism and I've always wanted to be able to play music that I love, but also make sure that to maintain and keep the crowd there. And Shecky always told me like a really good rule where he's like, two songs they know, one song that's yours. Two songs they know, one song that's yours. They're always going to be there. And the one song that they don't know, they'll probably be like, you know, I'm going to get a drink. Oh my God, the song I know is coming back on. Right. And it's just such a perfect formula if, if, if you need to do that. Mm-hmm. And, and when I was still building my name in Vegas, I needed to do that because, you know, I, I don't think there were that many of my fans that were coming to every single Vegas show True. that are going to pack out the, the dance floor. Like, you know, excess is huge. So yeah. Got to oh. be open to constructive criticism. Abs- abs- <laughs> abs- absolutely. Cause look where it got you. Yeah. 10 years here, baby. <laughs> Has it really been? It's been a 10 years. That's insane. <laughs> 10 years coming to Vegas. Yeah. I think David Guetta, Diplo, and I are 10 years at the win. That's fire. Yeah. How do you feel like playing in Vegas is different from playing in other places? I mean, <laughs> Vegas is the only place that um, you <laughs> just the, the, that things can happen in Vegas that stay in Vegas, I think is the best thing that I should say. Go on. Look, I mean, one time I had a... I don't know if I can say it. Can I talk about how I had a? You, we just wait. Hold on. A McDonald's, before you, before you a answer McDonald's that, sandwich in the club. Before you answer that, we just had a conversation with someone. <laughs> we were talking in the back, and we were like, "If you have to ask, if you have to ask permission, you have to say it." Okay. Well, I mean, I had a McDonald's sandwich in the club. It was one of the the, the coolest dudes, Schmitty, best best dude ever. Oh yeah, Schmitty is the coolest person alive. He'll he'll show up. You know. To, I mean, like, usually, like, to one show a month or something like that. And he'll come in and he'll order McDonald's for the whole club. Get out of here. Every single person will be eating a McChicken sandwich or a double cheeseburger. And it is eating a eating a double cheeseburger at 2 a.m. while DJing. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. The things that can happen in Vegas are just, they don't happen anywhere else. Do you think it's different than playing in your hometown of L.A.? Absolutely. I don't think anyone's going to bring a McDonald's sandwich, except if they want to throw it at me. I, listen, <laughs> Dylan, I would bring you I would bring you a McDouble. So in, in Vegas, people bring McDonald's sandwiches everywhere else. They bring me bananas to sign and pineapples. So, yeah. 
What is the craziest thing you've signed? A cake. And it was in Vegas, too. Of course. How, how did you sign the cake? Did they bring, like, the whipped cream? Did you have, like, the actual the thing? I just put my Sharpie in it, and I just kind of just jiggled it around, and I signed it. Yeah. How drunk was this person? Um, or drunk at all? I don't know. The, uh, pr- probably. I didn't, I, I didn't see where the cake went. It pro- they probably went on their face, and they were like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's Vegas for you. That's why it's the best. Sidebar, where the hell is Gerald? Oh, he's, he's at home. Um, I've been, uh, I, I stopped doing a lot of those videos because I'm working on this animation version of it. And I really want to get that going. It's taken so long. It's taken like five years. Cause was, I, we talked to you on zoom on the vibe. I want to yeah. say maybe like height of quarantine. Yeah. And I think there was talks that there was like a TV show or something like that. Coming yeah. Out with Gerald. We were working with Freeform, and then things changed. We got, we got dropped by Freeform, uh, and it was with 20th was uh, our production company, um, <clears throat> and just trying to figure out what, uh, like, if I want to do it on my own and do, like, a 10-minute animatic with my writing partner that I was working with on it, um, and then try to go back out and pitch it again. Mm. But, but, yeah, that's, I've, been sa- I've been saving Gerald for that, because I, I feel like the, like, I even have... Uh, I don't. I can't show you the animations because I don't own them. I would have to buy them. I'd have to call. Can we show when the cameras are off? I would, yeah, I can show you when the cameras are off. Oh, perfect. But I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so the, the animation's so cool. It's just, this company, Three Dar, did it, and yeah, I'm like, I'm so excited about it. So that's why I haven't done any of like the IRL Gerald videos in a while. You know what's interesting? The fact that you are so. I love you on social media, Thank like you. your your Instagram, <laughs> like. Do you do that all yourself or you have help with that? I, I have help with it. Um, but I mean, usually like all the Gerald stuff was all by myself. Um, all the the DJ Hansel stuff dealing with him is all by myself. I'm not him. Just absolutely. Why does he hate you? I don't know. What happened? He just he doesn't like that I put out his music because he doesn't want his music to ever be heard by anyone in the world. Mm. Um, so he got really mad that I put his music out for him. But I think people should hear his music. Why do you think that that's the case? Why does he want people to hear it? Because he, he thinks that's like selling out. That's like the ultimate sellout is to actually like sell your own music or, or let anyone else listen to your music. He likes creating art just for art's sake. Hmm. Yeah. Like one day he says this. One day he wants to make a song that he himself hasn't even heard. How does that even? I guess he just has to, you know, make stuff and then just with the, with the throw it away. Stuff? Yeah. Yeah, just keys. It just, it just I, I, I don't even understand how would he do something like that. I think you just visualize it in in the DAW, and you're just putting sounds, and then you just are like, okay, I think this looks good. Is he one of those music purists? Yes, he is. Analog. Oh, huh. yeah. He Which, so then I guess he wouldn't even anything? be using. Yeah, he wouldn't even be using. Like his faders look like this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He'd be on a mixing desk. Who has time for that? Nobody. Not me. I understand why he would. But you know what? I think he shouldn't hate you for that because you did a good thing and you want people to hear his music. Yeah, he's never going to he's never going to think about it that way. Do you think we can have a sit down interview with him so I can get his side of the story? Because I feel like there's always two sides of stories. Yeah, you got to call him and, and, and book him in. Does he hate stuff like this? I mean, I don't think he'd hate. I mean, you could probably get him. He loves talking about how much he hates me. So. The one thing it seems like he likes to do is, is talk about how much, talk about how much he hates me. That's so jacked up. Yeah. How's he going to do you like that? I don't know. Does he live in L.A.? I don't know where he lives. Mm. He's he's like effervescent. You, you see, he seems like one of those <laughs> people. Disappears and disappears. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like one of those people. You ever watch those uh, shows on TLC where they like live underground and they have like tons of yes. like, cord, tons of like canned goods that's, and paper towels and stuff like that? That's probably him. He seems like that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, <laughs> he's making his own toothpaste. Yeah. Yeah. Making his own toilet paper. I was about to say biodegradable. L- he doesn't yeah. use it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, what is next for Dylan? What is next for Dylan? Um, uh, I'm trying to finish up, uh, my mixtape. This mixtape is fire too. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully getting that out this year or next year. Um, I've got another single coming out April 7th. I think it's the date. Sometime in April. <laughs> but just, yeah, just releasing new music off of that, just singles off of that, and then uh, and then 
making tons of more new music this year and just having fun. Top five dream collabs, go. Okay. Um, Calvin Harris again. Um, who else? Um, Blink-182, especially now that they're back together. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Travis. I hope right. his hand is okay. I was on a flight with him. You were? He's he's so nice. Absolutely. By the way, I forgot that I, I should probably put my... No, it's all good. It's all good. Got my ear out the whole time. It makes you look cool. You're a DJ. That's <laughs> yeah. what you do. <laughs> um, okay, so that's two. I mean, I've always wanted to collaborate with Fiona Apple. Mm -hmm. I've said this so many times. It's just, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Um, and then Kylie Minogue would be awesome. I think she's incredible. I think her voice is incredible as well. And um, going to add another emo in there, Haley Williams. The best. The best. He's loving that. Yeah? Loves Haley. Haley Williams. She wrote the new John Summit song. Or well, what is one of the writers on that? We just found that out in She's the car. Great. Because that song is great. <laughs> um, can I just say it was a pleasure. Thank you. Chatting with you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. This place is beautiful. I agree 100%. I'm trying to move my show out here. I'm trying to sleep in here tonight. Let's make it a slumber party. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be weird. People walking by looking but, at us. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's Dylan Francis. Oh, my God. Asleep. Hey there. Hey, buddy. The, the, I feel like Vegas is definitely that place where people are going to tap on the window to make sure, sure that you're oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. How's it going? They're Thank nice. You. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> they're walking by. Uh, a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Of Appreciate course. it.